Good morning, Andrew Shikia, CEO and Marketing Director of Fido Alliance, President Karen Zhang of Fido Alliance Taiwan, Deputy Minister Wu of the Ministry of Interior, Director General Hu of Financial Supervisory Commission, and Deputy Executive Secretary Shen of the Office of Science and Technology of National Science and Technology Council. Friends from all over the world, it is a great pleasure to participate in the first FIDO Alliance International Conference and membership meeting held in Taiwan. The Ministry of Digital Affairs, or MODA, established last August, we started a vision of strengthening digital resilience for all. We're responsible for promoting innovation and change in Taiwan's digital policy. The MODA integrates the five major areas of telecommunications, information, cybersecurity, network, and communications. We're in charge to plan digital development policies and coordinating infrastructure, such as spectrum allocation, preparation and resource utilization to enable digital transformation of businesses and civil society alike. So we say that the MODA is really a MODA or a motor of Taiwan's digital development. And to further the motor's goal, we need to promote cross-domain digital transformation through ensuring cybersecurity. And the digital resilience for all starts from the theme of today's international conference, online identification. It's really the first step, the key step, for the Ministry of Digital Affairs in promoting digital resilience. In recent years, Taiwan has been actively promoting data governance, and the quantity and the quality of open data have grown, leading to many popular applications in addition to the successful counter-pandemic effort, we've also seen uh, real price registration uh, for real estate, transactions for air quality monitoring, water quality monitoring, and so on. So how does it, this relate to identification? Well, we recognize citizens' independent right to secure access to data. And so the MODA established the My Data platform to provide all citizens with services for downloading a copy of their own personal data for online applications so that the government can produce a copy of the personal data that we hold to the original owner. So anyone can provide these data that should belong to themselves to trusted governmental agencies or companies for their use. And of course, the consent is required every time. You can also check the usage history of your personal data on the My Data platform. And by doing so, you can keep track of how the data is being used and enhance the protection of your data and raise the awareness of privacy. As of December 2022, the My Data platform has been connected to 69 agencies, providing 132 personalized data downloads, 491 online services, and 111 convenient checking services, with a cumulative total of over 300,000 data downloads and applications online. So, as for identity, we make sure that the Citizen Digital Certificate, which is a plastic card, or the Ministry of Economic Affairs MOIA ID card, the IC financial cards, the software or hardware financial certificates, the national health insurance cards, uh, including the one-time uh, code, and so on, can provide a variety of identification methods. Of course, the Ministry of the Interior's mobile citizen digital certificate is the highlight, the TW FIDO, because it refers to international standards, such as ISO 29115 and NIST SP863. And of course, the My Data platform provides the different authentication strengths according to the identity assurance level and authentication assurance levels. And the data providers, which are themselves agencies, can choose the appropriate authentication method to obtain those personalized data for the citizens according to the sensitivity of the personal data stored. 
the popularity of the application, the convenience of the mobile application, and so on, are also taken care of. Now, the MODA aims to develop the use of such personalized data through the consent, the willingness, the voluntary contribution of the citizens to create an innovative data application environment for data altruism. And the MODA in the future will continue to optimize such service models and related mechanisms, not just in compliance with the relevant provisions of the Personal Data Protection Act and the upcoming Independent Data Protection Authority, but also ensuring the cybersecurity to expand the field of public services to promote the development of accurate, personalized digital services by all service providers. We want to make sure that the financial institutions and competent authorities can introduce more human-centered, innovative services models to achieve the goals of digital resilience together. We're very grateful for the joint efforts of the Chair, Karen Zhang, and all sectors which gave birth to the FIDO Taiwan Regional Forum last year. The participating members of the forum include friends from multiple areas, such as chip making, hardware equipment, software system, application services, forming a complete microcosm of the global and the Taiwanese technology industries. At the same time, our ministry has also become a member of the International Standards Organization, W3C, uh, this January. So here, by joining the FIDO Alliance and W3C, we demonstrate Taiwan's determination to connect to the global standards system and promote a convenient and a secure infrastructure. So we call the digital public infrastructure our main layer for digital resilience. The FIDO Alliance and W3C are close collaborators in the fields of online identification. We work together to formulate and promote important standards such as web authentication, secure web payment, secure payment confirmation, and so on. And among these, the web auth and FIDO2 standards promoted jointly by the two major international organizations, FIDO Alliance and W3C, have already been built into, as I mentioned, the infrastructure, the vast majority of mainstream browsers, operating systems, and so on. Now, in July 2022, W3C also launched a new decentralized identifier standard, the DIDs, bringing us a glimpse of the new dawn of an era of digital services that are truly personal. The standard enables each person to authenticate each other's identifications without the needs for a single centralized intermediary. So it's just like with distributed ledgers, everyone has a digital passport. And this common passport allows individuals to carry their digital assets, the verifiable credentials with them, whether it's uh, social media posts, photos, videos, and so on, the control and the consent of the uh, community of those contents are no longer just in the hands of a few multinational platforms, but rather will be returned to the co-creators themselves. And the FIDO Alliance establishes standards for passwordless login and works with W3C, um, I'd say, to add locks and keys to those passport design. And in this way, everyone can use their passports with peace of mind as they travel through the cyberspace. In addition to enabling everyone to use those online identification with peace of mind, the standard is also a crucial cornerstone for our national cybersecurity because we adopt the zero trust network architecture. The ZTA is based on the principle of never trust, always verify. And therefore, trust must always be established through repeated and multiple verifications before each and every access. So if such a zero trust architecture relies solely on memorized passwords. Well, uh, we cannot assume that others don't know uh, those passwords. And so we need device identification, biometrics identification uh, on device, uh, and trust inference mechanisms, uh, and so on. And so password by itself is easily defeated because it's just a single factor. 
And therefore, the identification standards established by the FIDO Alliance is particularly important. When MODA launched last year, we achieved a significant milestone by being the first to adopt the use of the FIDO standard for the Mobile Citizen Digital Certificate, the CDC, uh, for our official document signing. Of course, the Mobile CDC, the TW FIDO, is maintained by the Ministry of Interior, but for signing official documents, because we're the competent authority for e-signature, we adopted this as a pilot. And the Financial Supervisory um, Commission also uh, included the standardized financial mobile identification mechanisms in the Financial Technology Development Roadmap, the FinTech Roadmap, released in 2020. So the FSC also introduced financial FIDO. Users can buy their mobile devices, physical cards and biometric features and so on together and use those bio devices and biometric features on device for identity authentication with financial services in the future without having to use the physical plastic cards. Currently, more than 20 financial institutions are piloting the financial FIDO just as we are piloting the official documents. So in addition, governments around the world have been paying attention to and investing into the zero trust architecture in their own governmental cybersecurity systems. And so for Taiwan, the ZTA has also become an important national strategy for national security. In February 2021, the sixth National Information Security Development Plan issued by the Taiwan government mentioned the ZTA strategy. In the strategy, we will promote the introduction of the ZTA in governmental organizations. Here, the purpose is to improve the depth of defense and to ensure that the Class A organizations, um, the people uh, who are data stewards for all the citizens' personal data in those Class A organizations, to develop proactive defense technologies and to establish together a zero trust security protection when it comes to cross ministerial data exchange. We want to evaluate and gradually try this feasibility, but we've already completed the planning for the government's CTA architecture in our own MODA and the administrations for cybersecurity and digital um, industries. And the plan uh, includes the three core mechanisms, identity authentication, device authentication, and trust inference. The identification part focuses on multi-factor authentication together with electronic signature and encryption of identity declarations. So the multi-factor authentication mechanism, such as the FIDO2 standard, is again crucial, which allows for passwordless login uh, using physical security keys or mobile apps, such as the TW FIDO. And the TW FIDO is the access authorization proof. And we can issue the identity declaration uh, to the user, including JWT or SAML standard formats, which can be obtained and verified by the agency throughout the identification process. Now, of course, the TW FIDO also contains PKCS capability, so it is for identification and also for signing. And the device that runs the TW FIDO or related authentication uh, applications uh, is also part of the software certificate system uh, or TPM to confirm that the endpoint device is under the agency's management. So this continuous mechanism uh, to ensure the health of the device is as important as the identification layer. And for this, we need to include operation uh, such as OS updates, antivirus updates, application updates, configuration compliance uh, to update continuously the device health trust level. So uh, for the level A agencies that does have the all citizens' personal data with them, a lot of responsibility, uh, we will fast track the zero trust architecture through the introduction of ZTA in the T-Road. So it will not only help promote the development of domestic zero trust network security industry, but also advance the overall um, ideas of the awareness, the cyber hygiene 
of the cybersecurity. Now, another key focus of the government-led zero trust architecture promotion is in the industry, and it is in response to the critical needs of those uh, organizations uh, that, for example, um, has national security um, impacts such as the TSMC. So uh, the TSMC, as we know, is part of a global supply chain that involves many chip makers and related industries that does not only have hardware or manufacturing parts, but also the software-defined parts. And to support them, um, the semiconductor makers, Taiwan's independent research and developmental uh, capabilities in the cybersecurity industry is also paramount. So in the business sector, uh, those independent developers uh, have applied and many have passed the governmental zero trust network identity verification compliance so that we can share the best practices of the private sector and the public sector thanks to the work of standardization from the FIDO Alliance. And so further advancements toward non-repudiation uh, secure online transactions, uh, the e-signature regulations and applications and so on, again, have both private sector and public sector applications. They are equally crucial in achieving digital trust and safeguarding trustworthy online services in the cyberspace. Now, the MODA has been actively studying how to advance and build a more comprehensive foundation for digital trust that can keep up with a rapidly changing digital technology landscape. In addition to actively participating in and joining international organizations such as the FIDO alliances and the W3C, we also made sure, because we're the competent authority of the e-signatures act, we released a clarification in the e-signature effectiveness on December 2nd of last year. And we make sure that Taiwan's e-signature act regulation is still aligned, um, is updated to align with international standards. We also have been actively engaging in the digital cooperation with like-minded uh, countries, partners, in the Declaration for the Future of the Internet, the DFI countries, such as Lithuania. So during this process, we've discovered that many cross-border financial applications still rely on the exchange and confirmation of paper documents. Even though I'm a Lithuanian uh, e-resident and individually or domestically uh, powerhouses when it comes to e-documents, there are many obstacles with relevant partners on cross-country exchange. So we want to seek short-term and mid-term solutions. We want to invest in adjusting the e-signature regulations, establishing support guidelines and certification mechanisms, and to develop innovative applications to promote, together with the friendly DFI countries, the popularization and participation of our policies. So the public code, the infrastructure, is not just software code, but also the code for policies, code for regulations, and code for standards. And we want to comprehensively establish a trusted service foundation for the digital industries and the smart nation. We will simultaneously promote those standards and regulations to the various industries, such as e-commerce, telecom services, and online services, including online gaming. So uh, with a shared convenient uh, experience and secure protection, for the digital identification in online services, uh, especially with the FIDO standards, um, the governmental sectors, the businesses, and so on can both thrive. Now, I already mentioned the TSMC. The chip makers, the manufacturing industry in general, also need secure identification, and they also need zero trust cybersecurity protection. Um, the semiconductor supply chain already has a solid ecosystem and the expectation from our global partners uh, is that the Taiwanese chips uh, must be not just uh, made in Taiwan or not uh, solely made in Taiwan, but made with trustworthiness. We've evolved from OEM to ODM and today with our excellent R&D capabilities and manufacturing technology, Taiwan has become a critical power for the continuous improvement 
for the global computing, such as for AI, uh, for personal computing, for servers, cloud data centers, and edge computing, IoT, and so on. And so because our chips play such an important role in the global supply chain, it is important and urgent to make sure that the cybersecurity protection applies equally to every point on the supply chain. So the Taiwanese uh, governmental agencies, research institutes, and relevant international organizations have jointly invested in standardization also. In 2018, we promoted the cooperation between the TSMC and the ITRI and jointly established the Cybersecurity Committee under the Semi-International Semiconductor Association, working with the upstream and downstream supply chain providers and the cybersecurity industry experts to consolidate the industrial cybersecurity consensus. So it led to the formulation of the international standard and guidelines for risk management and the cybersecurity protection of the compliant production, uh, including the production line equipment systems uh, for the semiconductor industry. After years of effort, the world's first semiconductor security standard, led by Taiwan, the Semi E187, was finally launched last year. The Semi E187 covers four aspects operating system regulations, network security, endpoint protection, and security monitoring. The standard focuses on the long term support of the operating system, the network transmission security, network configuration management. Uh, vulnerability scanning, malicious code scanning, endpoint defense mechanisms, access controls, log recording, among others. So very similar to the governmental public sector uh, ZTNA architecture. Now in terms of access control, again, the FIDO authentication standard is listed as one of the reference mechanisms in the attachments of the standard. And furthermore, the E187 standard is just the first step. There are still many, many tasks to be carried out, including the establishment of the specific guidelines and the accreditation mechanisms and implementation and certification of the E187 standard throughout the supply chain. So this also means, just like the standardization of FIDO and W3C standards, the E187 indeed drives the entire industry to achieve new milestones together. We're committed to follow through on the follow-up tasks, to continue the development in order to make sure that the overall security implementation and the supply chain security configuration truly deepen into the semiconductor industry and other related industries. Now, I would like to also share that security has been seen by the semiconductor business as a necessary investment for the sustainable operation uh, for the various businesses in the upper and middle and lower reaches of the semiconductor supply chain. Taiwan has a complete smart manufacturing industry chain and the security industry or cybersecurity companies can leverage this advantage by collaborating very closely with machinery and equipment suppliers, the control equipment suppliers, and the system solution providers for cross-sectoral cooperation. For various application scenarios, we need different tailor-made solutions, and Taiwan is very agile. We can meet those diverse demands because we have spent decades building, as I mentioned, the Made in Taiwan brand, and we hope that the world will know that secured by Taiwan is as important. It is a new chance as well as a blue ocean for our cybersecurity industry. In addition, regarding to the establishment of such standards and certification systems, we also look forward to referencing the rich experience accumulated by all members of the FIDO Alliance in the past and the future. This will certainly help to implement the standards for identification, for digital trust, and cybersecurity protection in all industries. So not just the public sector, the class A 
uh, organizational units or the manufacturing and semiconductor, but also service industry, medium and small businesses alike. As a member of both the FIDO Alliance and W3C, the Ministry of Digital Affairs will continue to participate in the standardization process, following the needs of our domestic and the global partners' needs. We will keep pace with the rest of the world to expand inclusive co-creation. We call it the plurality. Thank you for your listening, and I wish the event a great success. Live long and prosper.